I've spent a lot of time in the last month running Abyss and Jungle Valley maps, and it is generally agreed upon by the community as the best magic finding strategy in Affliction League. And by best, I mean the most profitable because it's not the most fun or the most consistent strategy at all. So I've spent a couple of weeks trying to find something that's decent in terms of consistent currency generation and can still get big currency conversion rares, but has a more fun gameplay loop than carefully trying to kill all of the Abyss rares without accidentally blowing up the Stygian and Spire. I have finally found it, and it came from the League mechanic I least expected. Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm going to show what I've been doing recently as a fun change of pace from Farming Abyss. But before I do, we've been overwhelmed by the positive response to this new channel. We've recently gained access to YouTube memberships, so if you want to support us even further as we grow and keep making more content about Path of Exile, that's the best way to do it. Alright, just as the first selling point here on this strategy, I think it will hold up a lot better in the next league when the Affliction League mechanic goes away and magic finding isn't as insanely profitable. I think Abyss will probably fall off pretty hard and it might even get nerfed just, like, on top of that. In terms of what we're doing in this strategy, much like with the Abyss setup, we are trying to kill as many rare mobs as possible to fish for currency conversions. We are sacrificing a lot of rares compared to the Abyss strategy, we're not getting as many chances at the huge RNG jackpots, and so the high-end potential is lower, but we are supplementing that with a very large amount of consistent currency. We are consistently making 3-5 to five divines worth of drops in every single map on top of getting currency conversion mobs and random divine drops from Blue Wisps. I like this strategy more, even if it makes fewer divines over the span of an hour or a month or week or whatever, it doesn't really have any of the dry spells that the Abyss strategy does. It doesn't have the annoyance of accidentally blowing up the spire and just totally wasting a juiced map mechanic, it's just super and simple and smooth and consistent. Like peanut butter. I always love consistency in my peanut butter. You don't need magic fine gear to run this strategy either, it helps make the strategy more profitable, but the consistent aspects of this strategy are not reliant on magic find gear. This is a big change from the Abyss strategy, which basically had no consistent league mechanic driven currency at all, just rares dropping tons of divines. I am cooking up a totally non magic find version of this strategy, and I plan to share that uh, probably is the next thing I do, that will be focused on doing this a lot cheaper and faster, and I think it'll be a good strategy to run probably at the start of the next league, or even now if you're operating on a tight budget. I have done this content without Magic Find Gear, it's decent, but by having Magic Find Gear you really just pile in more currency and make it a lot more profitable. Alright, let's jump in game here and talk about this strategy. Unlike the Abyss strategy where we really tried to put all of our eggs into a single basket, with this setup we're doing two things at once. Thing one, we are still fishing for rares that convert all their drops into scarabs or currency. We want to force as many rares onto each map as we can. This winds up being quite a bit faster than the Abyss setup because Abyss spawns so many rares and can be so slow. Those would often be 20 plus minute maps. Usually in this case we're in in about 10 or 15 minutes and th that is good. In and out in 15 minutes is acceptable. 20 plus minutes, it gets a little, it gets a little tiring. But thing two is our main league mechanic, which is Breach. Chayula Breach Stones are an in-game boss fragment. They are worth 1.3 to 1.5 divines in bulk each, and they sell pretty quickly. We can consistently farm 2 to 2.5 two Breach Stones per map. About 2.5 Breach Stones, potentially up to 3 with moderate investment, and maybe more like 2 Breach Stones per map with a relatively low investment setup. Most of the cost of the maps comes from the magic find oriented stuff that we're running, things like these beyond sextants and delirium mirror sextants, and of course, winged reliquary scarabs, because those are super expensive due to adding so much value into the currency and scarab conversion rares. We are spending anywhere from 100 to 280 chaos per map, depending on whether we're using gilded or winged scarabs. And that basically is it. Just those scarabs, just winged reliquary and winged breach scarabs alone are really able to cause that much of a shift in the in the price of each map. And I think a more budget oriented setup probably is the right call here, but I had expensive mats laying around, so I use them and I haven't regretted it so far. The Self Ignite Chieftain is a really, really good build for this setup. I think it actually works better than it does for Abyss, if I'm being honest. Any build using Defiance of Destiny handles Breach really well. Breach spawns a ton of mobs, and the heals from Defiance of Destiny totally counteract the threat of being hit a bunch of times really quickly. Also, Explodey, any sort of Explodey effect, like B 
being a chieftain and having that 5% explosion chance, it just really clears out Breach. There are so many mobs in Breaches that an on-death explosion mechanic built into your, your ascendancy, either basically either coming from chieftain or occultist, can quickly chain through a pack and screen clear. And obviously chieftain's explosion is 500% of health, occultist is 25% of health, so chieftain does wind up being the better setup here, but I think either can work. Now let's talk about the Atlas strategy. If we pull up our Atlas here, we are using a Wandering Path strategy still here, and that is because we're magic finding, we wanna increase the value of the quant and rarity wheels in the middle here, get 30% quant and 30% rarity from our passive tree here. And then also we wanna increase the map modifier effect of our top hat here, because that'll increase the quantity and rarity on the maps as well as the pack size. So that's all great. And that's all pretty much standard for any sort of magic find setup. We're also taking seventh gate and all of the gate passives so that well, so that we can use Breach in our map device because it's not in the map device this league. We're also taking all of the Breach nodes. Specifically what we want are the nodes that give us more quantity of Breach splinters dropped either by Breach monsters or really we want the ones that cause hands to drop more Breach stones. That really is what gives us the most Breach splinters in each map. Breach hands drop a lot of breach splinters, especially with Wandering Path multiplying all of these quantity of breach splinters dropped from breach hands uh, passives. We, we don't really care. Obviously, all the notables can be useful. They are OK, but this setup winds up generating a lot more breach stones than a non-Wandering Path setup does. I, I have compared both, and this is definitely more breach stones per map. We also want to take Beyond and Delirium for the same reason that we did in Abyss. We're just taking the Delirium Notable Unending Nightmare so that our Delirium Mirrors are basically turned into Delirium Orbs. Now, hypothetically speaking, in rolling your maps, you could roll a Delirium Orb or two or three onto all of your maps and then continue to roll them the same way as normal. But you would want to corrupt them and shoot for eight mods. And so then that adds kind of a a level of RNG where you might just be throwing away some maps that you've delirium orbed up. That's kind of irritating to think about. And this winds up just being a simpler setup, but it does mean a bit more sextant pressure. As for Beyond, Beyond just adds a ton of mobs. It adds a ton of rares. Beyond mobs do have increased quantity due to this wheel up here, and they just drop a lot of currency. We take the notable, then we never have to deal with the Beyond boss. That's good because they are pretty slow to kill and they turn off Beyond mobs spawning in the map, and we really just want more guys to blow up all the time. It kind of helps us keep our damage rolling throughout the map to have Beyond guys to explode all the time. And the same goes for Delirium mobs too. Normally I find Delirium mobs kind of irritating, but with this build it's actually quite helpful. It's basically a DPS increase for everything else just to have those Deli mobs blowing up and helping keep your ignite chain going. We are taking Singular Focus. That's just a notable that I really love. It really helps with generating a bunch of maps and also just the quality of life of weeding out maps that you don't want to do is really nice. Turning them into basic currency, like maybe some of that will be chaos or divine orbs. Most of it's probably going to be scrolls of wisdom, but honestly, just not having to pick up like maze maps is fine by me. We also take a bunch of points in Ritual, and the reason for that is pretty simple. Ritual is just a very basic, simple mechanic. It adds a lot of rares back into the map. You know, if you kill, first off, Ritual will add some packs around the Rituals themselves, and then it just gives you a free second chance to kill those enemies and hope for more currency off of them. That's the main draw. It's just cheap juice. I don't really think you want to spec all that much into Ritual. Maybe you get lucky and you get like a great base out of it or you get something, but I said in the previous video I hadn't gotten anything worth even one Divine from Ritual this league. That is still true, and <laughs> so I'm not really putting much effort into specking into Ritual other than just increasing the chance and taking these two nodes here that increase the speed at which it spawns monsters so it takes less time. I did put these two points in here just because I kind of had two floating points. And I think that getting increased chance of ritual altars with special rewards, div cards and currency, I believe, are counted in that special reward set. But I mean, I assume they are. They're they're quite uncommon. And I have feel like I've seen them more often by taking these two points. But you could put these two points anywhere, really. That just seemed like the best place for me. As for Einhar, I was running him in the Jungle Valley setup, the 
abyss setup i dropped all of his atlas points i i had one really juicy map where he was there and it was a very narrow uh, uh jungle valley and he shoved a couple of abysses out of like a 10k wisp map and i don't know that it was actually his fault it might have been harbingers or ritual or i think there was an ultimatum there it's probably the ultimatum guy's fault but in any case i blamed einhar for it so i've dropped everything related to einhar you can still run his scarabs, but I just in terms of actually putting any points into spawning any of his red but red beasts. No, thanks. As for other league mechanics, I played with strong boxes and Legion again since doing the last video. I found them to be OK. They just feel like less valuable versions of Abyss. They don't really have a great consistent moneymaker like Breach does. Blight is also a pretty fun mechanic and really good for this build. Any build that has Explodey built into it is going to do really well at Blight and Chieftain does amazing at Blight, but it is too inconsistent with a Wandering Path setup. You really do want the notables for Blight to be able to function, and obviously you can't have those with Wandering Path. In terms of the Scarabs that we are running, I think I have some in the map device here already. Perfect. We are running Winged Reliquary Scarabs, and we don't really care that much about getting more uniques, but they make the currency explosion significantly larger. This is added into that currency conversion. And that is why winged reliquaries are so expensive. They're like eight tenths of a divine, so like 120 chaos or so. Whereas gilded reliquary scarabs, I think, are maybe like 10 to 15 chaos, quite a bit cheaper. Gilded will work on a budget, but that is the number one thing to upgrade for any sort of magic find strategy to make your currency and scarab explosions larger. Breach scarabs are also obviously a requirement here. By running winged breach scarabs, you get two breaches as opposed to only one from a gilded scarab. Now the price difference on them is like five chaos versus 80 chaos, I think. And you only get one extra breach. That's the only difference. Is that worth it? I don't really think so. I don't think that one breach is worth 75 chaos. I've still been using winged breach because I had some to blow through. I don't think they're worth the cost unless you decide to do this strategy in a group. Gilded are just so, so cheap, and you're going to get a guaranteed five breaches with winged scarabs or a guaranteed four with gilded. I, I think it's fine to just run gilded. Bestiary scarabs I have been running because they guarantee Einhar, so you're not getting betrayal guys popping in uninvited. That does add a bunch of high quant rares into each map, and that is pretty good. I have gotten some of my best currency explosions from Einhar's red beasts. Harbinger scarabs are the last thing I've been running here. Harbingers just add a bunch of easy rare packs onto each map. They're the simplest option. They are super cheap. I think a good alternative to Harbinger or Bestiary, depending on, let's say you want to, let's say you really hate Harbinger or you really hate Einhar and you just don't want to deal with one of those, you can run Div uh, Divination Scarabs instead. So you can just swap either of these out if you feel like that's not a mechanic you want to deal with at all. Div Scarabs are super cheap this league, like insanely so. You could run Gilded Div Scarabs and significantly increase the number of uh, Fortunate cards, which basically just give you Divines. You're getting like one sixth of a Divine every time you get a Fortunate card, and you can get 150% more of those in this map. They, dr they pretty much drop like candy, so dropping either of these in that in that place I think is a great move. Honestly, it probably is something that I should swap. I should probably drop the Harbinger Scarabs, not waste my time with those blue bozos, and just get more div cards. I think that probably would be better. It would be faster at the very least, and that actually does mean more currency since Breach is so profitable. As for Sextants, we can see right here, we have to run Breach. That is self-explanatory, and it's very cheap. Like, very, very cheap. Only a couple chaos per map that we're paying to get an extra Breach. We are also running Chayula Sextants. I'll show that off here. In fact, I have a whole bunch of them in my bank. So we're running these Chayula Sextants, and these are great for two reasons. For one, they add three additional class hands, and we do want to open, we want to go around high five in all the hands we possibly can in our Breaches. They really do drop a lot of currency. And also they make all the breaches belong to Chayula, which is super important. We want to force the, all, all the breaches to either be Chayula or Ulnatol through a sextant. That guarantees that all the splinters that drop are valuable. Chayula is more than twice as valuable as like Ash. Now our other two sextants are pretty much just stock standard sextants for any sort of uh, magic find setup. We are running beyond sextants that that is the way that we get beyond into our maps and the sextant also makes it so that you get 25 percent increase beyond demon pack size so it is a lot more valuable than forcing beyond in in 
through any other method by actually rolling your maps until you get beyond on them or using beyond on the map device. Not as good as just using the sextant. They are kind of expensive, like 120 chaos each. That is why, because they are so valuable and they're not totally irreplaceable, but all of the imitations are really not that great. Delirium mirror sextants. Again, we are using the passive here, Unending Nightmare, this uh, keystone passive. In order to basically turn it into Delirium Orbs, you can run Delirium Orbs instead and that would free up a Sextant. I actually think that running the Delirium Mirror Sextant is more cost effective, even though it is kind of expensive, 100 Chaos, maybe 120, depending on how big of bulk you're trying to buy at a time. I don't need to explain Delirium Mirrors, right? They're, they're good. They add a lot of quantity, they add a lot of guys. Okay. The biggest downside of this farm strategy is the lack of sextant flexibility. Now, hypothetically, you could drop the mirror of delirium sextant and run delirium orbs and have some other sextant that you could put in its place. I think that is a more expensive, higher investment setup than this, but it is something you could consider doing. All right, now let's talk about our preferred map. We are running dunes. We are not running jungle valley. And the main reason why is it is just the best possible layout for clearing breaches. It's super open, it's basically just a big old rectangle, and it's full of guys. The boss is also in a pretty consistent location, he's easy to rush to and kill, he's on the opposite side of the map from you. So if you spawn in the bottom left, he'll be in the top right. You spawn in the top left, he'll be in the bottom right. It's pretty easy to rush and kill him, and that's really important. We do want a boss rush after we've cleared out the Wildwood. If you're running a self-ignite chieftain, I like to have detonate dead in my weapon. That is my preferred approach. And so what I can do is after I've cleared out the Wildwood, I can just weapon swap, which is whatever crap is in my offhand and run all the way to the boss and then swap back and, you know, kiss him to death. And then that way we're fine, right? We can kill the boss as sort of the first mob we kill in the map. And this will ensure that all of the blue altars, all of the Eater of Worlds altars that we're getting throughout the map, we can take the player bonuses on. Those are the best for magic finding. We're looking for currency duplication, quantity and rarity, or scarab duplication. Those are the main things we want. Div card duplication is also pretty good here because you do get a lot of fortunate cards, especially if you've decided to run the div scarab, which I think I might have convinced myself to at this point. The other reasons we run it are that it has a lot of guys in it, and it just drops a really good div card, the fortunate. It is a very common card. It gives two divs for 12 cards. There are plenty of maps where I've hauled in over one whole Divine Orb just in Fortunate cards. I really, really love this card. I really, really appreciate whoever put it into the game. Brilliant idea. As for our favorite maps, we are running 11 Dunes and then one Glacier. And the reason for that is, as always, when you run Singular Focus, you want to run 11 of the one map that you're trying to focus farm, and then you also want to run one adjacent map as well. This will actually increase the drop rate of the map that you're focusing. This also allows you to get more maps through the adjacent map drop chance. Don't know why that feels like a tongue twister. Uh, these little passives that are in the lower third of the tree, you are able to get actually a handful of maps throughout farming, and glaciers like not a bad map either. You know, if you want to do some other farm strategy later on, Glacier's uh, one of my favorite maps, actually. All right, now let's talk about rolling maps. What I like to do is I like to take all my maps. We'll just type dunes in here. Just pull out like four maps. I like to take a separate map tab, throw them all in there, use chisels to roll them up to 20% quality. So we'll just show this off here. And then I just like to out scour them until I get an acceptable amount of quantity and I have mods that don't disable the build. That is all we're looking for here. So this is my regex. I believe this is the correct one. It is not. Okay, so what we're looking for, at least with this build, is we want to make sure we can regenerate life, mana, and energy shield. We want to make sure we can recover life and energy shield. We want to make sure we don't have uh, reduced effect of non-curse auras. Those are all bad. We do take a bunch of damage as elemental, so we want to make sure that minus max player res isn't one of the aura effects uh, or the, the mods on the map. And then I'm looking for chance to avoid we basically do all of our damage through ignite, so we don't want monsters to be uh, ignite immune, do we? So we throw our regex in there, and then I just tap them with alk and scour until I get that 80% quantity mark that I'm looking for. Usually I will roll these like 30 or 40 at a time, and wow, that was actually pretty quick. 
Then once I've done that, we're not looking for any special sort of mod. We're not looking for plus two proj or anything like that. So once that's done, I will just tap them all with vol orbs and then we're pretty much good to go. If I get ones that gray out, I'll look at them. If the quantity is low, say they rolled down to four mods and, and like they're bad mods, 60% quantity, I'll just throw them away. If they're high quantity, I will hold on to them. You know, this is an eight mod map and but maybe a map that I don't want to run. In this case, I would hang on to this and use this on a different character. I have, I have started a, a new tab where I just throw all my overflows uh, into that. And this is a map that I would run on a separate character in situations where it's just a really terrible map. I could maybe sell it off to somebody else. People will buy eight mod maps. They they love them. All right. Once we've taken care of that, we want to check our map device. And before we start up our map, we just kind of want to check everything. Make sure our sextants are good. Scarabs are good. Map device is set to breach and then we can run the map. In terms of what we do in the map, similarly to the Abyss strategy, we're gonna open the Delhi Mirror, we're gonna jump in the Wildwood, carefully clear it out, try to get all of the events in that diamond shape that is in the Wildwood, and we'll use Wisp Trails and follow them real carefully, follow enemies running out of the darkness, and use that to try and triangulate where we are in that diamond in an effort to engage with every event. We always wanna be looking for white wisps around the corners of the screen, use those to either give ourselves more vision or just refill the clear meter in the zone. Ultimately, you want to kill as many enemies as you can in the Wildwood. They really are the main source of juice. Once the portal opens and we're kicked out of the Wildwood, I like to go back and pick up every wisp and kill every enemy I might have missed along the way. There's no worries with doing a low juice map. It's OK to do a low juice map. I prefer high juice maps, but because of breach, a no juice map, a low juice map is still actually pretty profitable. And on the plus side, you can zoom through low juice maps, but unlike with the Abyss strategy, where if you came out of the Wildwood with like 2k juice, it might not even be worth running the map. I don't think that's the case here at all. So once that's done, you zone out and you do the map. In terms of doing the map, I like to weapon swap and then rush to the boss, give him a kiss, watch him die. And then I clear backwards from the end to the beginning. I kill everything in the map, but skip all the league mechanics. I activate all the blue altars and I take the player choice every time unless I get insanely lucky and get an Eldritch Minions take Divine Orbs altar, which this is hypothetical. That hasn't happened yet. Once everything is cleared out, we do the league mechanics. We just go league mechanic by league mechanic, clear the whole map out. And then once that's done, we're done. Unlike Abyss, Breach is super simple. You touch the glowing hand, then you go give a high five to all the clapped hands, clasped hands inside the breach. They drop a lot of splinters. The enemies drop relatively few splinters, but they will occasionally drop currency. They also give a ton of XP. I leveled a character I, I was playing another character doing a version of this strategy. It started out just uh, just very briefly out of the campaign, like 77 or something, and I think it was 86 in two maps. The big class hands, the Chayula hands will drop massive amounts of breach splinters like 14, 16 breach splinters at a time, which that's a basically a stack of chaos, which is uh, pretty good. You really want to make a beeline to those and, and high five them as quickly as you can. Opening all the hands that you possibly can in each breach, killing all the breach mobs you can within the breach is the most important thing. You can loot the splinters once the breach has closed and you should. They are valuable. Once it closes, you loot all the fragments, you repeat until you've cleared all the breaches and cleared all the other league mechanics like ritual or you know, if Legion or Abyss shows up in the map, you can still do them. That's fine. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now let's talk about the profits that I've been making from this strategy. In terms of breach stones alone, I've been making about three to four divines per map. And the cost of doing the breach part of the strategy is maybe 90 chaos per map if you're going with winged scarabs. That's about a 600% return on investment, which is really good for high cost farming strategies. If you put in Gilded Scarabs, if you massively cut the cost, the revenue will be slightly less. You'll probably get 40 fewer splinters per map. I think that's an okay expectation, maybe even on the high end, maybe more like 30. But the cost drops by 75%. You go from like 90 chaos per map to like 20 chaos per map spent on breaches. So the profit margins are much, 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 much bigger. There is even more. You can also get the Chosen Divination card if we type in Chosen here. You can get this div card from opening breach hands. This is five cards to a skin of the Lords. You can sell these for maybe 50 chaos each. I think keeping them and handing them in to, well, whoever your div card hand in person of choice is 
to actually get the skin of Lords is a better approach. It is a low cost gamble that can pay off pretty big if you get lucky. I got one of these already and it was okay. Not like a great skin of the Lords. I don't remember the colors on it, but I think I sold it off for five divines or so. So it more than paid for itself. Now this means you're only making about two and a half to three divines in pure profit per map from breach, but that is only the breach stones. You also get tons of currency from the magic find side of this strategy, and that can fluctuate quite a bit. I made tons of raw currency from this strategy. I found another Hirnakora's lock, which was great. I have had tons of divines in chaos. You know, I'm getting close to like 7,500 chaos again, even though I've been just like throwing them away. I realize divines are low right now in my tab here. I just bought an awakened multi strike for my lightning strike champion yesterday. That basically ate up like several hours worth of profits. Putting an actual number on a magic find strategy is hard to do unless you've kept everything in a dump tab and been really disciplined about it. And then you can just say like, this is what the dump tab is worth. I've been making a lot of tweaks in the process of triangulating down into this strategy, which I have now been running for a while. And I can say that I'm super, super happy with this setup more than I was with the Abyss strategy. It's a lot more fun to do and it's still very profitable. I think it's making more currency than I expected, certainly more than I need. And I will absolutely play this in future leagues. I've known about Breach for a long time. I've known how to do it. I've played around with it for a very brief period of time, but I've never really been that big of a fan. But this absolutely converted me. I think that having a build that has some sort of explodey in it really makes Breach feel super, super satisfying. And I'm a convert now. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'd be happy to answer them. And if you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching and have fun doing Breach. Bye.